Okay, so this is where we left last week. We were trying to to run this test. So last week, so we just finished our, we've created our uh, step definition and with that, so if I go, so we've created a step definition with that. So, and I said last week, this is totally wrong. We shouldn't do this. So today we're going to correct that. So, and one issue that people were, have, were having was, they were talking about feature files, duplicate of feature files, and also how do we get that and I think also some people are having issue with null pointer. So today I'm going to do that. I'm going to create more feature files. One is in one feature file that will be two scenarios so we can know how to use the same test in multiple ways. Then also I'm going to create another feature file. So we only, we have two feature files. So and if time permits, we're going to talk about different assertion, and we're going to also use hook today. So yeah, first thing first, let's try to you you uh, lose uh, use the hook. One, I said when you have something like that, you want to create your hook to so that you store your driver inside your hook and then it's going to create that for you. So the first thing to do is to create a class and then after you create the class you have a add sign before scenario so and then you can have that as your hook. So Okay. So one is So now I need to Okay, before I do that, let's let's go step by step so that I don't confuse people. Let's first focus on the feature files first. On the feature files first. Let's focus on the feature files that come back to the hook. One, I think issue that people are having, I've got the login, which is login scenario. So now I want to create the invalid, this is for the valid login. I want to create the invalid login. So for the invalid login, I want to have another scenario. Scenario, and I call it invalid login. So for this invalid login, what do I need to do? I need to navigate to the site, given I navigate. So that is already suggesting that I've got that so I can take that. So because that's what I want to do. Automatically that is linked to my step definition. That is linked to my step definition. So and then given I navigate to the site when I click so Okay. So when I click on login link, when I click I've got when I click on login, maybe that's a different step. So but I want when I click on login link. So let's use that. So the next one and I enter username and I enter now I want to enter invalid password
So then I should not be logged in. I should not log in. I should not be able to log in. Okay. So you can see what happens. There are two step definitions that I have I haven't written. Step um, there's two different steps that I haven't written in step definition for. Even though this I've created I've just written this one. This steps. I've just written this step for that particular scenario, invert login. It's already mapped to my previous step, um, step definition. So I don't need to write that step definition again. The only one I need to write are these two. These two are the ones that I need to write step definition for. So I don't need to do anything for these three up here. So to write the step definition, we do the same thing. So I can create our step definition. I want to still put them in the step definition that I've created before. So these are the new ones. So now, so what I need to do, I want to enter invalid password. So if I go to If I go to gift page, Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Someone has answered the question. That's fine. I can move on. Okay, so let's go here. So now I want to click on login. I want to write my valid username. AG at gifrage.com. Oh, let's see, test. And the password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want to click on that one. So then I want to verify that I get the error message. That is the manual process. So if you are testing that manually, that's what you need to do. You need to put on your valid email address, then put invalid password, click on sign in, secure sign in, and then you should see that error message, then you validate that you get the error message. So that is the manual um, test. Scenario, but now to not automate it, as we seen from our test, that's another question. Okay, I'll quickly address this. Okay, so. One thing that you can do, you can as well uh, have invalid um, email address and invalid password. But most often, this um, yeah, in this scenario, we have a valid username and or a valid email address, but invalid password, because that is the most important scenario to us. Because 
you want to be able to ascertain that someone with a is not able to log in with a wrong password, even though the email address is okay. So that is the purpose of this particular test. So, but you can have other scenarios also for invalid email address and also val valid password. So, and to see that with invalid email address, the person is not able to log in. So for JavaScript, there are different test tools that are used for JavaScript. So you have Jasmine, you have uh, Phantom JS. So there are different tools for JavaScript testing. So for not Angular, Angular is a development tool. So uh, for testing tools, you use uh, Phantom JS. You can use Jasmine and the other ones. So but this is not going to be covered in this training. So, okay, let's move on swiftly. Okay, so now for invalid passwords, what do we need to do? We need to get our password which we already know what exactly is that. So if you go to the previous one that we've done for password, so for the valid password, yeah. So this is the one that we used. So I can copy that one just to reuse it. And paste that in there. But however, I want to put a wrong password. Incorrect password. Okay. So then after that, you click on the login. You click on the login. And then after you click on the login, You want to you want to validate that the, the next error message is displayed. You want to validate that. So there are two ways to do that. Inspect that element. When you inspect that element, let's say one, I inspect that element. I can asserting that this particular uh, element is displayed. The all elements is displayed, or I can also verify that the text is also displayed. So depending on what I want, so. So that is that. So I can ascertain that that div is displayed because that div is only dis is displayed if there's uh, error message or a lot. So if it's successful, you shouldn't see that div in there. So that is one you can validate that, or you can read down and then get the text message for for the, the text for this particular for this a lot. Okay, let's do this. Let's first assert that we can see this particular element. So right click and copy. So let's use SPF. Let's see what you can use. If you don't use SPF, you can use class. But well, let's try to use SPF. Okay. So then I should not be able to log in. So what do I need to write there? So here now, I want to declare a web element and store that inside. I want to declare a web element. So 
Okay. Just to make it easier, let's say I find the element, find driver, Mr. Driver, yes, what do you want? Please find an element for me. Okay, what element, by what? By SPAS, by dot SPAS. Okay, so what am I looking for? Okay, oh, I said that is not great. So I'm not going to use that right now. So I'd rather go and use a different method so I don't continue teaching you a bad method. So what's going to happen now? Let's use CSS selector, copy CSS selector. So uh, I, this is what is called absolute SPath because it's starting from the beginning of the SPath, which is the HTML. So it is not advisable to use it. Why? Because that element can move anytime. For instance, if this particular div is no longer there, uh, maybe the developer decided to remove that div, and this particular uh, element is going to, you know, the selenium is not going to find it because one of the uh, navigation div is not there. So if you already remove one of them. So that, that's the issue. But that's why it's not advisable to to use absolute espace. So the best one is to use a relative espace. For instance, this is a relative espace. Once the once Telenum is able to find um, in the DOM ID which is equal to password, then we, we just find it, which is relative to ID of password. But this is not a good way. So now I've copied for CSS selector. So I'm going to use, say, okay, I need to use CSS selector. So, okay, let's copy what, let's paste what we've copied. Okay, so that is that. So, so now this is what is going to find. So by doing this, this element is going to be found. So what are we going to do to the element? We're going to establish that if is found or if is displayed. So you can as well just say dot, okay. So I'm looking for display. Is display. So you have some stuff, some method that is going to return boolean for you. You can see is display is returning boolean, is enable is returning boolean, is selected is going to return boolean to you. Which means that if that element is displayed, it's going to say true. If that element is not displayed, it's going to say it's going to return false for you. The same way if an element is not enabled and you say it's enabled, then it's going to return false. If that element is enabled, then it's going to return true for you. The same likewise for is selected. So in our case, we just want to uh, establish that that particular element that we are looking for is displayed. So, I mean, this is displayed. So what we need to do, we just need to say dot is displayed. Dot is displayed. So that that is one way. So now it's a boolean, right? So that is going to return a boolean for you. So what do we do with the boolean? Like I said, if that element is displayed, it's going to return true for you. Now you need to wrap that element in an assertion you need to put an assertion in that part in this so this is going to return true or false for you so now you need to now put that inside an assertion 
So how do you do that? Yeah, you can say assert So what are we asserting? Assert assert equals. So we want to say if it's equal, but that's not what we are looking for. If you say equal, that means you are going to be uh, comparing two uh, objects together. So for this one, we are starting if what we have right now is true or is false. So let's say, let's look down where we can find assert true or assert false. So for we're looking to assert if it's true. Assert true. Okay, good. So I start true and it's looking for a Boolean condition. As I, as I said, this, the one that we have will return a Boolean condition for you. So we need to put that Boolean condition inside the bracket. So basically, that's what you need to do. So you need to that, then put that. So that is how to do the assertion, if you need to do the assertion. So, but however, you can as well do assert dot, no, sorry, assert, no, sorry, assert. False. So now you can see I've put a start false here, but it's not getting anything for me because I'm, I didn't put a start dot uh, a start false. Or, or better still, just to show you what you could do in other way, instead of saying a start dot a start true, I can say that. I can say that. I can put my stuff inside as it is, but the only difference is I did not put the assert at the beginning. But now, I can now say, okay, if you, if I put that, I just want that to come up again. Okay, can you see that? It said, which one do you want? Do you want um, ORG, test NG, assert, or you got multiple choices to select which of the assert on library you want to select. So, and it said alt enter to, to make your option. Oh, no. Alt enter. Not really? Okay, I think I may. Okay, so yeah, so alt enter, so you select which one. Normally, I would advise you choose the one for J unit. So you can see, so when you do that, so that the error goes away and your assert is now imported. So you will see your assert at the top. So that means you don't even need to do assert dot assert true again. So you can see even the other one that we did, the assert is removed automatically. So you can do that. But if you are not confident with that, you can use, you can say assert dot assert true, then you put your condition inside. So that's how to assert it. So let's try to run our test again. So now we have two tests. But apparently, I think we've done that. So that's what I wanted to show. We've done this step. But initially, it was showing that it was not yet mapped. So for that, you just need to have a bit of patience for that to disappear or to be mapped correctly. But if it's still not mapped and you are sure that it is definitely mapped, just clean your um, project 
when you clean your project, then you should see it map. If it doesn't map, clean and compile. If it doesn't map again, clean, compile, and test. So that should get everything working for you. So so now let's run that one. It's not working. It's not running. Okay. So that is started to to run. Let's see what we get. So. So after this, we also uh, create a new scenario, and we instead of using this scenario, and uh, we also we try to use background in that scenario. So we move step by step like that. So we create a new scenario and we use background. But let's wait for this to finish and see the result for this one. And another thing, some people. Also, okay, let it finish. I'll show you something. So that's the login page, login link click. So email and password. So trying to click on the sign in button. It shouldn't take that long. So I think it failed. Okay. So that failed. Let's see why is that is the case. So it said unable to locate a lot. Oh, okay. That is fancy. I think there's an error message. There's a missing line, right? We say and I enter invalid password, but we did not ask you to click on the login. So we need to say click on the login. So I'm going to close this one. So I'm going to rerun it.
Yes. Uh, so people who are looking at this error message, you, sh- you, sh- you, should, you shouldn't worry about them, actually. So, so it's opening the browser right now. But at this time, I think everyone should be able to get to this point, be able to open the browser and also click around. So if you are struggling and you are not able to get to this point, please talk to any member of your team so that they can get that resolved for you. So because from here, it's going to be easy. So the rest is going to be basically the same thing. It's going to be more of your code and just need to put that code wherever is necessary. So, yeah, the password is entered. So you're expecting it to click on the log. Yeah, just click on the login, and you have your error message. So it's going to validate your error message. So, and I think it's finished. It said the test is done. So what we need to do now, let's try to close our browser also. So the test is all test passed. And so now I say, and I close the browser. So this one, we go, when we're going to put this in the hook later. But for now, let's try to just do it this way. So just to close the browser, we do that. So create. So let's put that in there. So. So driver dot close. So yeah, that is that. So now let's create another feature file. And let's go to the site and see what we can do. Firefox. So let's wait for that. One minute. So the next, let's just try to do registration. Okay, in registration, uh, I think Femi was asking a question about capture. Yeah, so this is a capture. Uh, it is meant to prevent robots or automatic script registering on your site. So, and if you are able to automate this and you're able to click on this one, and it actually forfeit the purpose of having the recapture. So what does that mean for testers? 
it means that in most cases, your test environment will not have a capture. If you are going to be automating it, they will remove it from there. But it will be on the live just to prevent people from using the automation tool or to use a robot to um, pass data in or to browse through the website or to enter or uh, edit a form and post the form. So that's the purpose of the recapture. So, but I think Femi is looking into how to break it. So if you do, please let me know. It will be a very great uh, case study. Okay. So now, this is what we need to do. We need to do the registration now. So we create a new feature file to do the registration. But this time around, we try to use some other things that we've not used in BGT. So let's create another feature file, new file, registration, dot feature. So, okay. So now let's go again, feature, what is the name? What is the feature that we're doing, registration? Description is is test for the registration page. Scenario Register Okay. Let's see. Valid registration without creating. Okay, that's it. Fill in registration. So this one, I just want to feed the form, but I don't want to click on registration because if I do also, it's not going to do anything anyway. It's going to ask me, maybe, oh, okay. Let's even try. Let's try. But it's not going to register anyway. So let's just say valid registration. And we click on register. But because we have capture there, so it's going to ask us to fill in the capture. Valid registration. Okay. So given, so I navigated the site. Want to put that? Okay. We already have that already created. So when I click on register button, I think register link. When I click on register link and okay, let's see what we're going to have. So we have first name and last name. So this time around we're going to not say I enter first name or last name. So we're going to use examples. We're going to use examples. So but 
Okay, before we use a sample, let us uh, use parameter. Let us parameterize that. And I enter first name first. Let's go to the last name. So, and last name, Google Agenda. And I enter. Okay, I want to also call it that. And I enter first name. So what do you have again? Email address and password. So then after that, you want to click on, so like I said, we are not going to bother ourselves with the capture. So we're going to just click on signing. So, okay. Sign up further and So then I should be registered. Okay. Then you need to think about how do you verify that you, you are registered. One thing is to say I don't get error message or if you okay for instance you can check that you got the message. That you, I think there's a message that's going to be displayed there that you've been able to register successfully. So, okay, let's start to code this and I'll show you how that works. So, okay, let's first thing, let's this is already mapped and we haven't got any of this mapped. So, the same way. Let's create the step definition. We want to create everything as you go. Okay, it's not, that's not great. So let's create a new file. So, okay. That's where it's on the right path. So, but I want to call it a different name. I want to call it register. So, and I want to Java, Java 8. Okay. So that gets the first one for us, then we can do the rest for the other ones. Create all step definition. I want to put it in register. Okay, cool. That is that. So now one step after another. So the first step, I click on register. So, what is our step checking? What's our, this is register. Let's inspect that element. OK, 
Okay? That is that element. So we can look, inspect that element and look at it. What can we use even to find the element? And I can see that we can use uh, link text because it's got register as a link. So let's use the link text. So because you can see there's no ID, so we can use SPAS. SPAS will also bring it. But and most of let's try to use link text because that is a link. And the name that we're looking for is the link is registered. So let's try to navigate to that register one link. Control Alt B take us there. So now we want to find this element. Trevor dot O is not there. So we need to declare our driver basically. So this is where it becomes interesting. Now let's create our hook now. So because you want to carry our driver from one class to the other. And that means it's the first thing we are going to do here is to declare our driver as a static uh, object. Static means that it, it can now carry it across your classes. So that means that instance is can be carried from one class to the other. So because that's one of the issues that some people have when you declare your class, uh, your object in one class and you want to use it in another class and you declare another instance of that particular class, of that particular object in another class. So then what you're going to find, you're going to find a null pointer because what is just in instantiate is a new object entirely. It's not the object that you think you are actually calling. So let's do that. Let's start one after the other. So I say on my book. Okay. What I could do is to create a new folder and I call that folder utility. So I create another folder on the Java and I say new package utility utility So then on that utility, I create a hook. So in this hook now, I want to declare my driver web driver so I can use that one driver is equal to no Austin just deploy it first but I want to say it is public so that other classes can see it and it is static. So that means the data can be, can persist across all the classes that is going to be calling it. So, and that is me declaring that driver.
Okay. Uh, I think the issue was I muted everyone, so including myself, when the issue was. So how about now? Cool. Okay. Let's continue. So what I did, I think there might be error message because that is underlined. So let's try to see what the issue is. That's one error, but well, let's see what that comprises. But well, it's compiled successfully. It's compiled successfully. Then what is that? So let's clean. Everyone meet them their mic, please. If okay, I think it seems to be fine. So it is taking taking this time. Okay, all right. Let's continue quickly. So the next step. What's that again? I don't think there's any issue anyway. Oh, okay. Cool. There's one here. So yeah, so you can see you need to look at this thing. Attention to detail is very very important. So that is an issue. Okay, so that that's where the issue is. So it's fine now. Everything's good. Okay, okay. So let's go to registration where we were. So now we want to write our step definition for this. This has already been done. So we want to click on registration link. So let's go to the when I click on registration, so now we can now use our Look from here. Look dot. But now, okay, it's telling us. Are we talking about this hook? Yes. So, find elements. So how do you find it? So yes, yeah, like we said, we're going to find by link text. So and the name of that text is called register. And after we find it, Mr. De Mr. Trevor has helped us to find to find that. So what do we need to do? We want to click on that element. Come on, click. Okay, that's it. 
So when I click, so we found we found the element and we click on it. So that is done. The next one is type on the element. Come on. So type first name and type last name. So So I think I put the first name, the, uh, bef uh, the last name before the first name. So, but that's okay. I can just swap them so that they type according to the form. But that's not an issue anyway. It's okay. So okay. So enter first name. So we are passing parameter. So let's go to the step definition for that. So you can see there is. A string that has been passed as an argument, that is your uh, first name. So now, let's find that element that we want to type into. So, what is that element called? Find element. So, yes. Fortunately for us, it's got an ID. So let's use the ID. Let's not use as part this time around. Let's use an ID. So now we go and find it by ID. Book dot driver open. So find element by Thought. How do you want to find it, Mr. Driver? I want to find it by ID. By ID. So what are you looking for? Okay. That is the name of the ID. Put it in this in the code. So yeah, so I want to find it by that name. And, and after finding it, what do I want to do? This is a text box. I want to type into that. Last week we know when we want to type into a text box, we use send keys. Dot. Think send keys. Okay. Then what you want to type inside the keys, inside the text box goes into inside the braces here. So for this time around, you want to type what you are getting from your feature file, which is this one. Arguments. So I'll leave it for now so later I'll tidy it up. So your string that you have here goes into this. Okay. Okay. So that is that. So this one comes from your feature file. So the same thing applies to your last name. Inspect your last name and the ID is also called last name. So that's it. Okay. In that regard, let's use the name also in this one because it's got name. Let's not use the ID. Let's try to use different methods to find different elements. So let's call our Mr. Hook class. And you've got our driver stored inside you. Yes, I've got that. Mr. Driver, Apple's find element. Yes, there you go. How do you want to find it? By reset, by name now. Please find it by name. By name. Okay. So what do you want to find? Last name. So after we find the last name, what do you want to do? You want to send a kiss into it? What is that key? Now, we want to do a bit of... Um, Tidy up also. I didn't do for the last one, but I want to try to do it right now. This 
is the string I said is coming from your feature file, the uh, argument zero. But I want to change that argument zero. Oh, sorry, I think I put it in the wrong place. This is not supposed to be here. This is still supposed to be last name. Okay. Okay. So it's not supposed to be on the email. So it's supposed to be the last name. So, okay. So now the argument zero is our last name. But I want it to be meaningful so I can change that to last name instead of argument zero. So anytime I talk, I say last name, it's going to be the last name that has been returned from your feature file, which is what is used in this regex um, parameter that's been passed to your uh, step definition. So now, what do I want to type? I want to type the last name that's coming from the feature file. So I just put that. So now, we'll do the next one. So which is the email and password. That's email. So let's use in this one, let's use the class, class name. Okay. So, in email address, that's what we want to talk about and want to do now. So, Mr. Ook, yes, you have our driver, yes, get our find element, yes, by what, we want to say, let's use the class name this time around, okay. So what's the class name that we want to find? Start the input. Then after that, what do we want to do? We want to send I send keys to reach. And what do you want to send? We want to send the argument into reach. That's what we want to type. But the same way, we want to change our arguments to emails. So then we put our emails inside. Okay, so the same thing for the password. So what? Let's inspect the password. The ID is password. Mr. Ook, yes, sir. Please find where's the driver. It's going to find elements for us by what did we say? Um, so, how are we finding that? So, Yeah. This one, let's, let's use SPATH now. I think we'll use different methods. Let's use SPATH. Bye. SPATH. So what's the SPATH? So then... So the same way also, I want to change the argument to password, just to make sure it is meaningful. So, dot send keys, send keys, what's that? Okay, I think there's one missing. 
the same place. So, password. Okay, then that's one I discover is missing. So I go to the registration. I think, yeah, we've done this, we've done this, and it's a click on signing. However, I just discovered that one thing is missing. There is confirm password. Yes, and there's a question coming on. Is it always necessary to create a Java class hook, or we can just use? Uh, uh, like I told you, actually, so we've done last week. We didn't use the hook at all. We didn't use the hook class. So, but we are just making things tidy right now because then there will be other things that you need. You might need to put in that class to make your test tidy. That's why I try to do things like one step and another. You've seen that we've done it last week without using the hook. So your answer is yes, it's possible to create your test framework without having to use hook. But sometimes it makes it makes it tidy if you use a hook class. You might not call it hook as it's called. You might call it a different name. That that's okay. But well, it's fine. But as you go along, you're going to see I'm going to do some cool stuff around that hook also so that you don't continue calling the hook, hook every time, hook docs, hook docs, and driver, hook dot driver. You can see how we are repeating it in our class, which is not a, a nice way also. So we we do it step by step so that I don't just rush into things. And you can see everywhere we have book the driver, book the driver, book the driver. So there's a tidy way, there's a tidier way to, to do this. So, but one step, so we're going to refactor that later. So, okay. All right, let's continue. So, where are we? Yeah, I was talking about the confirm password. So let's inspect that, then we need to add that to our feature file also. So the email addresses. So let's see if you can use a different method also. Okay, I think we've kind of covered most of them. Yes, yes, selector. Yes. So let's use the name again. Let's use the name again. So now we need we need to create confirmed and I confirm my Okay, so we just need to add that to our step definition on register. Okay, so we need to confirm that. So the same way also, I'm going to say, I'm passing the password as the string, and I'm going to be sending the password. Okay, so that is that. Then the last but not the least is the sign up button. 
So we look at the, what has it got? It's got the class of Monday. So let's use the class. Okay. So let's go to this way and that question. I think I think I've just answered that question. Yeah, the answer is yes, I've just answered the question. Okay. So, where was I? Okay. Let's go to registration. My click on sign up completely. So, okay. So, when I say book dot driver dot Find elements. So then, um, by what I think is uh, we're going to use the class run by class name. Then we uh, start the class. And we want to click. Okay, so that is that. So then, after that, we want to ascertain that we're able to. Um, yeah, I should be able to register. So let's let's hold off on that one for now. Let's try to run it. So, okay, moment of truth. So after that, we do the assertion. So when you do the assertion, we put that into that. So if we still have time, we we'll do examples right now. So that should be fairly easy. So we we'll do the example. And Is it taking long or Okay. Last. So let's see what we have. Okay, it's still running. So, we, uh, on the then I should be, I should, oh, I should be registered. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to change that. Then I'm going to try to see if you make any errors. How do you change it from the step definition and also on your future f uh, step so that because sometimes that could be that could cause an issue to your test. So next week also we make everything tidy. So this screen also needs to be maximized. We talk about that one next week. You maximize your screen to make sure 
he maintains the same uh, width every time. So, okay, register. Please click on register. Cool. Okay, now enter the first name and last name. Oh, but email is not entered, so we need to know why that is the issue. So the email is not registered, it's not entered. So let's see what the problem is with the email. So first thing, let's first correct the email. Let's put the right email address. Okay. Let's go. Control B. Okay. So apparently, I think the class is not working. It's not able to find that. So let's see what the error is. Yeah. Not interactive. Last time. So let's think because of the huge. Let's use the SS selector. I think I got that wrong, isn't it? The class is the input. That should be fine. Okay, let's use the ID. I think it should be fine. The class is the Oh, okay. I get it because the class, another issue with the class, you need to be careful when you're using class name. Some class name is not always unique. I think that was the issue. That class name that we used there is not unique. So it's actually finding it, but it's the wrong element that it's finding. So, so yeah, we're meant to write the email out. So let's do that quickly. Our time is fast spent. Dots. ID. So then the ID should be okay. So this email is actually coming from your feature file. So uh, which is the email that you've written there. So let's try that again. And okay, I want to use this and I close the browser.
כן. Just talk. another thing that's let's try to use a different one this is for elements for last part when I click on sign up Selector. See what we have. So, I'm not sure. Okay. okay. I'm going to use CSS selector now. I'm not going to run it right now. I'm expecting that to, to pass, but I'll go to registration. I want to talk about the samples now. So, okay. Let me try to create another issue file. Okay. 
Scenarios. Registration. Say, more valid. Okay, so what we're going to use is similar to this, so not to waste our time, I'll just copy that. So I'll paste that here. Well, now I'll use a uh, scenario, but I don't want to use scenario, but I want to use scenario outline because that allows me to use a sample scenario outline. Then I put example at the end. Okay. So now, what are the examples that? Uh, your yeah, sample is your test data, right? So your first name, your last name, and everything go in, into that. So uh, this is what you need to know. Instead of saying your first name, you put, I put my, into that, into, So the first one, okay, so then followed by last name, Last name. Okay. Um, okay. So the next one is your email address. Then password. What's the data for the password? Okay, can change that to I mean it's a type with the so that's password. Okay. Then so now you want to say your confirmed password. So that one. Confirm. Okay, so what you've just done is just to create your table, basically. This is your ed, uh, header, and this is these are your uh, data. So 
your first name, this is your data for the first name, your last name, this is data for the last name, the email, this is data for the email, password, that's password, your confirmed password, that's password. So literally what you are saying is that when this is executed, any time the computer sees first name, it's going to go and get the first first name. And if you see the last name, it's going to go and, and it will do that on and on like that. Let's try to run this now instead of the other one. So you can see different way to represent this. Okay. So what that is doing, so you can, oh, what's that? Okay, let's try to build it. What's going on? Build. Normal build process. Well, however, what that is doing, so it also means I can change this password to make wrong password so that that is different from the other one. So the benefit of this is that you can as well have multiple data in at one go. So you can do something like that. So now my next registration data is the G. And I want to use my surname as that. And I want to put invalid um, email address. And I want to leave the other ones as it is. So and let's So it's this trying to clean it. So, and um, yeah, on and on like that you can have. So what it means, okay. What's that? Okay, let's that is going on so let me see can oh So you can have as many data entry as possible. So I want to register under one. The G new, that's my name. G name. So I think this is taking up. So your apologies, we might be like 10 minutes late. So for that, so I just want to make sure I finish this before before we leave this last one. Okay. 
Okay. Cool. I think that compiled without any error. Let's try to run it again. I think maybe it was my issue. Patience is a virtue. So when I click on run, I need to wait for it to really run. So let's wait. I think maybe the last one was because I tried it twice. That's the thing. Come on. Alas, yeah, it's kind of very slow. So, yeah, so like, as you can see, we have two ways of doing this right now. This is using a sample. So we have three test cases in this particular story. So even when the test is run, it's going to take them as uh, three different test cases. So I'll give you results based on each of the lines, actually. So, so that's a good way to actually test a lot of data using one uh, test uh, feature file. Okay, let's quickly run the register. Okay. Now let's go with the first name. Okay, can you see that? It's done that. Last name, last name, email. So, no, that is, it doesn't look right to me. So it's going to do that like three times of uh, yeah, but I think that doesn't look right. The last one did actually, so because that should be tied to no data. So yeah, we're going to start from here next week. So. And if you can lay your hands upon it, so that that is not what you are looking for. Well, yeah, let me try to see. question coming on. Yeah, I think Sylvester is right. So that should be not that. Okay, one minute.
Mm. Okay. I think that should be that. Okay, that looks better now. Okay, so that looks better. So you can see that is mapped correctly. So if you try that lastly, so apologies, this is taking time. So if we run that now, so that should take the header. Yeah, this system is very slow. Yes, so it's trying to build. Okay. Okay. Well, this, this is where we're going to stop anyway. So if you have any question, let's try to answer it right now. So while we are waiting for this to finish. So, yeah. So next week we talk about different things. So, but this training is coming to, yeah, within the next four weeks. I think two, uh, yeah, three weeks actually. So we're going to finish everything. So. I will focus one more on the UI, then we talk about API also and after this one. So and that that will be us. So any question let me let me know right now. So hopefully this should work. Yeah, okay, cool. So that is getting the data. So it's going to do that for, yeah, that will fail. So you're expecting that to fail. So it's going to start in next one. Because we did not, yeah, the capture is there. Normally if the capture is not there, you should expect that to register. So it's opening another page. So to do the next one. So I think he's done the first one, so we're supposed to do 
this one now. So you expect to see the key here. Okay, cool. So that is the second one, and the email address is not correct, so exactly. So, and it's going to do the last one, which is this one now. So that's the third test. So this is going to be close. Open a new instance. It's finished, it's not yet finished. So it's got the scenario and it's on that one. Scenario 19. That is that one, yeah, line 19. That's where it is right now. So, okay, that is the last one, I think. Okay, I think that's everything for now. So, yeah, so we come together next week. So, and lay your hands upon this, give, give it a try. So, um, so, yeah. So, I'll see you next week. So, yeah, we program anyway. So, and yeah.